All right, now that the Pixel event has finished, they definitely unveiled some pretty exciting products, and as the name suggests, the star of the show was the new Pixel 7 and the Pixel 7 Pro. It wasn't a huge generational leap like the complete redesign of the Pixel 6, but Google has shown how they refined these phones to possibly make them the Android phone to beat for this year. I have a ton of thoughts to talk about in this video, and I'll also be explaining why I think the Pixel 7 is the perfect phone choice based on my own personal experience with the Pixel 6 series after using it for the entire year. All right, let's get started. Okay, before I start talking about the specs of the phones, let's talk about what probably is the most important feature of these Pixels, the price tag. Last year, Google shocked us with the incredible pricing of the Pixel 6 and the 6 Pro at a crazy $599 for the Pixel 6 and $899 for the Pixel 6 Pro, or $799 and $1179 if you're in Canada. This undercuts the flagship phones from Apple and Samsung, which are the main competitors for Google. And letting out a huge sigh of relief, Google has decided to maintain the same price tag for the Pixel 7 and the 7 Pro, despite the new features and the higher level of refinement. This is very important for a couple of reasons. Number one, it stands out from the crowd of flagships based on the price tag alone. If Google were to price the Pixels at the same price as an iPhone or a Samsung Galaxy, consumers who don't know what a Pixel is would most likely ignore it and pick the more popular device. And number two, it gives consumers an enticing reason to choose a Pixel. Once consumers see the Pixels in person, especially the $599 price tag of the Pixel 7, they'll immediately notice the cost savings and be more inclined to try it out. And depending on the region you're in, there will usually be some good promotional offers from the Google Store or from your local carriers. Let's start talking about the specs the phones and what difference you're getting with that $200 though to help you make up your mind. And also, if you're interested in some awesome Pixel 7 coverage on the channel with fun reviews and day of life vlogs as a university student, feel free to subscribe to my channel to get notified when those videos drop. Alright, let's start with the design which is a very incremental upgrade. As you know from the Pixel 6 series, Google scrapped its usual cameras on the upper left and instead slapped on a giant horizontal camera bar that goes completely across the phone, making it look like an Among Us character. And this year, instead of it being a full piece of glass, the camera bar is covered with aluminum, leaving a cutout for the camera lens. The Pixel 7 actually has a matte finish on the camera bar, while the Pixel 7 Pro uses a polished finish. This will help increase the durability of the camera bar, and it also gives a more mature and elegant look to the phone in my opinion, especially when combined with the new color options. For the Pixel 7, we're getting Obsidian, Lemongrass, and Snow, and for the Pixel 7 Pro, we're also getting Obsidian, Snow, and a different green, Hazel. All of these colors aren't as fun as last year, I think these new options look incredibly sleek and premium. Flipping over to the front, we're getting basically the same exact displays with a 6.7 inch 1440p AMOLED on the Pixel 7 Pro, which does use LTPO tech meaning that it can go from 10 hz to 120 and then a 1080p 90Hz AMOLED on the Pixel 7 that's interestingly smaller by 0.1 inches than last year. That's actually a good thing though because with the ever so slightly smaller display, you're getting a more compact phone that has less width, height, and thickness. Not to mention mentioned, you're shedding off almost 12 grams of weight compared to the Pixel 6. I know with the launch of the Pixel 6a, many creators, including me actually, prefer the compact size and the lighter weight of the 6a, so this is actually a welcome improvement, and actually another reason to pick up the smaller flagship instead. The Pixel 7 Pro, on the other hand, is bigger and heavier, not to mention the uncomfortable curved display that actually many didn't like of the 6 Pro, so yeah. Moving on to performance, it's not surprising that both these phones will perform exactly the same. Google is is upgrading the chip in both of these phones this year to the Tensor G2. Don't worry though, the Pixel 6 is not stuck of last year's chip, <clears throat> cough cough Apple. Unfortunately, this chip won't be anything groundbreaking with very minute performance gains, especially when taking a look at the leaked benchmarks. The 12 gigs of RAM on the Pixel 7 Pro compared to the 8 gigabytes of RAM on the Pixel 7 is also unlikely to make a difference since after using the Pixel 6 for a whole year, I've never run into any issues of RAM management. And other than the small camera processing improvement, the only standout feature of the new Tensor chip is Cinematic Blur, which is basically portrait mode for video. Apple's Cinematic Mode that can shoot up to 4K now is really really good, so it'll be pretty interesting to see how the pixels compare. Other than that, all the software features will be exactly the same between the two phones with my favorite voice dictation mode. With this special voice dictation feature, Google is able to make transcriptions incredibly fast and accurate and all offline. It can even fix grammar mistakes, do auto punctuation, and even send by voice. It's been game changing for me this past year as it often replaces finger typing, especially when my hands are busy or when I need to reply to many YouTube comments at once. It's probably my favorite Pixel exclusive software feature and it still blows my mind to this day. 
And finally, for the battery life. The Pixel 7 Pro keeps the same battery capacity at 5,000 milliamp hours, while the Pixel 7 gets a slight decrease from 4,600 to 4,350, which should be fine because of the smaller screen and the more efficient chip. What's new this year, though, is the Extreme Battery Saver Mode, which Google claims is able to keep your phone running for 72 hours. We'll definitely test that to see if it's true, but on performance and battery alone, there's no reason to choose the Pixel 7 Pro over the Pixel 7. And finally, where the main differences lie, the camera systems. Starting off with the main sensor, which is going to be what you use the majority of times, both these phones share the same exact 50 megapixel sensor taken from the Pixel 6 series, which was very impressive for how it performed in low light and how much detail it was able to take in. The ultrawide in these two cameras will also be sharing the same 12 megapixel sensor with the Pixel 7 Pro including autofocus for the first time, which means you'll be able to take macro photos. But be honest with yourself, after having fun with the macro mode for the first few days, are you really ever going to use it ever again? The selfie camera camera on the Pixel 7 is also going to be upgraded to an 11 megapixel sensor matching the Pixel 7 Pro which is really good to hear as the 8 megapixel sensor on the Pixel 6 was not very good. But something new this year is finally face unlock on both these phones as it's really convenient as backup when the fingerprint scanner doesn't work well. And finally we get to the telephoto camera which is really the only main difference between the two phones. Google is upgrading, or in my opinion, downgrading the old 4x optical zoom sensor to a new 48 megapixel 5x optical zoom sensor, which is apparently smaller in sensor size, leading to slightly worse low light capabilities. That's fine, but my issue with this lens is the 5x zoom. For normal use, I'd argue this is way too zoomed in to use casually, as many creators including me already think that the 3x zoom on the iPhone is too cropped in. I still think 2x zoom is the perfect focal length for everyday use, especially for stuff like portraits. If Google did add a 2x zoom lens with this 5x zoom lens, that would have made a lot more sense. Now, I get that it's useful for zooming into signs and stuff as well, but it does decrease the likelihood of me ever using that lens. And as you can see, there are basically no differences in the camera systems other than the macro mode and the inclusion of a 5x optical zoom lens. And for the phones themselves, a bigger curved 120Hz display and 4GB more RAM is not worth the extra $200 plus depending on the region you're in. Many YouTubers actually preferred using the Pixel 6 over the Pixel 6 Pro just for the more compact size and flat display alone as well. So for this reason, I will be sticking with the Pixel 7 to save money and I suggest you do the same if you don't care about those minute differences. You can use that money to buy yourself a nice pair of earbuds or even the new Pixel Watch. And actually before we end off, let's talk about the new Pixel Watch. It's Google's first smartwatch that's been hyped for a very long time, and I'd say it's not mind-blowing, but it ain't bad either. The design does look really minimalistic with its circular watch face and a single digital crown, and also quite elegant I must say with its curved edges. The big controversial thing though is the really thick bezels, but based on the pictures and the videos of the smartwatch in use, it doesn't seem to be too distracting. The Samsung Galaxy Watch 5 bezels are actually pretty thick too, and it's not a deal breaker at all. Feature-wise, it does seem pretty basic with all the usual features, but the interesting thing will be how good the fitness tracking is on the watch. As you may know, Google acquired Fitbit in 2019 for $2.1 billion, so I'm assuming they'll share a lot of the same technologies to make the watch more reliable with its readings. The battery life is the one thing I'm not too happy about though, as it's rated to last for 24 hours, which is basically the same as an Apple Watch, and slightly worse than my Galaxy Watch 5. And that's basically it for this video. I hope I helped you make a good purchase decision today, and if you liked this video, don't forget to smash the like and subscribe button for more awesome content. I will be making some awesome videos with the Pixel 7, and especially my popular day in the life vlog as a university student, so definitely stay tuned for that. And on that note, have a good one guys, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Come